seven days a week, 365 days a year, six, 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, continually, always, you should always have a praise from the Most High God on your lips. Why? Because He is that amazing. Amen? Has He been amazing for anybody in here besides me? that 
to be inventive, we can be an encourager of love and helping out. Not avoiding or uh, worshiping together as some do, but uh, spurring, spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. The word of God for the people of God, amen. Thank you so much for voice of great faith. That was the title he gave himself, so I don't want y'all to think that I was calling him something. He said that he was the voice of great faith. Why not put those vocal cords to work? Amen. All right. The sermon subject for today. Why are you here? Why are you here? Sermon subject for today. Camera, why are you here? Jeremy, why are you here? Why are you here? Mama Pat, why are you here? And I'm not saying why are we here as in why do we exist? Why are we on the planet? No. Why are you here? Why do you have yourself in your glad rags in service today? Today is not so much just a, a, a preach, but it's a look inside. That's why I'm at these days, because I've been doing a lot of looking inside myself. So I figure why not have everyone that I know look inside themselves as well. So we're going to look inside of ourselves today and ask and maybe get an answer, because everybody's answer may be different. Baby brother Chris, why are you here? Marjay, why are you here? Now, young people will tell you, I'll speak for them. I'm here because my mama said that I couldn't go outside if I didn't come. I'm here because my grandmother made me. She said I wasn't going to watch TV if I didn't come to church today. But I am talking to us who have a choice. Why are you here? Did you come simply because you didn't have anything else to do? There were no games on TV that you really wanted to watch? Or the games came on later today? So you figured you'd come and get a quick Jesus in, quick shout, quick bump before the games came on? Did you come because you know that if you didn't come, that your pastors would be looking for you? So rather than have that happen, I'll just come in here and come to church. Or did you come because you've been coming to church your whole entire life and you don't know anything else to do on a Sunday? JK, why are you here? Did you come because you have duties and you know that we are a part of a small congregation, so if you don't come to do your duties, then you'll be missed? Why are you here? Did you come to lend your gifts and talents and abilities to the body of Christ to help encourage, exhort, uplift, educate? It's that why you're here. There are many different reasons. If I asked everybody in here individually, or are you here today? Nobody is going to give me the same answer. Everybody has a different reason why they're in church today. Well, I heard that they serve cake afterwards. And Mama Benita's cake is a blessing. So I came, amen. So I came to get a slice of Mama Benita's gifts and talents that she so readily gives to the ministry that is great faith. Is that it? Jeremy, did you come simply because you know that you're supposed to be here doing what you're doing right now and you know that if you don't do it, they'll have to find somebody else to do it? Why are you here? Or did you come in today saying to yourself, I don't want to leave the same. Something has to change because I'm sick of my situation. I'm sick of going through what I'm going through. I'm tired of feeling the way that I'm feeling. Is that why you came? Is there something for me to learn today that's going to help my life? Is that why you came? Cameron, did you come because you knew Pastor Jim was going to be there to pick you up around 12 o'clock, so you figured you might as well make an appearance? I mean, you ain't had nothing else to do with no basketball game. Why did you come? Janice, did you come because you knew you were on the preaching rotation and you knew your mother was going to verbally pinch you later that if you didn't show up? Is that why I came? Brianna Marie, did you come because I asked you to? Why, 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 why are we here? Why are you here? Why do you do this every Sunday?
Sunday? Why do you repeatedly come every Sunday? And if nothing in your life has changed since you've been coming, really, why are you here? I've been going over this question, and the reason why I've been going over it is, is this reason. Number one, I, I watch a lot of things when I'm going. If you go downtown for work, and if you're a people watcher, like I'm a people watcher, you see a lot of interesting things. I've noticed that the evangelism system for the Jehovah's Witnesses is outstanding. They take off work to stand down there by that little shopping cart with all the little books in it, and they evangelize and exhort, and, the, the, and they have titles that jump out at me. What does the Bible really say? when you die. Is there a hell? Is there a heaven? And for 25 cents, they will sit down and talk to you with, with their watchtower and their awake and all their little literature. So I was wondering to myself, when they go to the kingdom hall, do they leave out like some of us leave out the church? Do they leave out informed? Do they leave out knowledgeable? When, when uh, um, um, what's that on Sunday night street? When Mosque Miriam has their services, do they leave out the same way we sometimes leave out? Just as empty as we were when we came in? Why are you here? Why not go on Sunday night street and sign up and wear a bow tie, Dr. LaRon, and sell a bean pie too, and stand out on 87th street? My sister, my brother, final call. Why did you choose here? Did you know that this is a feeding ground? Did you know that the church is really a spiritual, this is a spiritual kitchen? There's some reasons why we should come to church. While you are thinking about why you're here, let me balance a couple of reasons off of you that um, perfectly may help you Number one, we should come to church to be fed. Fed. Spiritually fed. You should not come in here with your stomach growling and still leave with your stomach growling. Spiritually fed. However, there's a caveat to that. In being spiritually fed, note this. I want you to think about this in the natural. Can you eat just once a week and be full? By the way, is a marvelous combination. Uh, if I only fed you that on Sunday, as filling as it is, would it last you till the next Sunday? Cameron, if I took you to Portillo's, you got a big beef, extra dip, with a large fry, and a chocolate cake shake, and you ate it today, and you're like, man, Jesus, I'm mad for would, would that last you until next Sunday? No, because if I gave you that at three, being the growing young man that you are by 445, you're going to want to eat again. Right? So what makes us think when we come to church on Sunday, I need to be fed, I need a word, I need a word. Preaching, what does the word say for me today? And she, mama gets up here and she sweats and hollers and screams and gives you all of these wonderful, she gives us the $50 word, then she gives us the $5 breakdown of the word, and then she gives us the dollar breakdown of the $5 word. Then dad comes up and then he gives us all of these things and then we're fed, but then by the end of the day, we're empty. Because you do know that as soon as you leave church, that's when the devil does his best work. Hmm. Okay, so if you know that and you're coming here to be fed, do you also know that you still have to eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Hmm. Bible study on Thursdays. The prayer line on two, Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah, I know. Um, the best preachers are preaching yourself, mom. Um. All right, look here. You come to church to be fed on Sunday, but that does not mean that's the only meal you eat. Church is like Sunday dinner. You come in, you get fried chicken, you get it baked, fricassee, whichever way you want it. You get your macaroni and cheese, you get your greens, you get your salad, you get your potato salad, then you get your chocolate cake, you get all of those wonderful things. Sunday dinner, that's what church service is. So 
So you get that great Sunday dinner, and then Monday through Saturday, if you're a non-domesticated person like myself, you deal with banquet Popeyes. But you're still eating. Do you understand me? Amen? You come to church to be fed, but there are also other meals that you must get. The spiritual man has to be fed constantly, just like the natural man. Which means you have to blow the dust off of your own Bible and read it for yourself. Or utilize that wonderful Bible app that fills the space on your, on your mobile devices. We, we're coming to, you come to church on Sunday to be fed, this is the starting meal to get you to the next meal. That is why you're here, the starting meal. So now that you've gotten all of this, then tomorrow you may be may be proud. Then on Tuesday you may do something else. Speak a kind word. Do some ministry. These are your meals. But you start here getting fed the Sunday dinner. That's why you're here. Another reason that you're here is to be refreshed or to be restored. Let me tell you something. Living a Christ-centered life is not easy. There is a cuss on my tongue at least two days out of the week. And it depends on who's cut me off in traffic. It may be released, and I have to repent in Jesus' name. Please don't judge me, because I know y'all do it too. Amen? You come here to be restored. You come here to be refreshed, which means you come in here and you're all beat down from what happens out there while you live in your saved life, your Christ-centered life, your God-filled life out there, and the devil is throwing everything at you. Because contrary to popular belief, he does not wear a red spandex outfit camera with some horns and a little tail. The Lord, the devil dresses it up how you like it. So if you like it cute with a little waist and a um, 27-inch Brazilian weave, that's how the devil's going to dress it up. Ladies, if you like a tall, dark, handsome, looking a bit like Idris Elba, that's how the devil is going to dress them up. Just like that. Everything you like, the devil knows. So then he puts it in front of you. Monday, Tuesday, girl, you know, you know, you know you like it. You might as well go on ahead. Look, you can repent now. Wednesday, I'm still here. Wednesday night, I'm still here. Thursday, what up, shorty? I'm still here. I know you prayed yesterday, but I promise you that prayer's not going to last 24 hours. I'm still here. Friday night, hey boy, how you doing? My name is Sin. You know, you can pray later. You can always pray. Jesus is going to always be there. But what's happening? So you get all of this Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So by the time you get in here Sunday afternoon, you are ready to pass out on this altar spiritually. Why are you here to be refreshed and to be restored? But how can that happen? If you are flexible and you listen for the ear of God. The first thing you have to do when you come in here is, the song is so true, leave all that on the altar and be open and willing for God to restore you and to refresh you. You can't be restored and refreshed and have a new shopping cart of goodness, grace, mercy, favor, forgiveness, all those wonderful things that God gives us. You can't have a new shopping cart full of that if you still have a shopping cart full of what you got while you were out there. Why are you here? To be fed, to be restored, to be refreshed, so that you can go back out there and tell the devil, no, I will not. I will represent Christ. That is why you come in here, among the fellowship and the assembly of the saints, to get you to go out there and you can do it again. Because if you never came in here to get that refreshing, and you never came in here to get that restoration, please know that the enemy knows, so he'll prey on you all the more. Oh, you think that the enemy is after you after you said your prayers? Wait until you haven't prayed in about two weeks and see what he does. When you haven't cracked open your Bible, when you 
haven't worshipped, when you haven't said anything remotely to our God, when your strength and your resistance is down, then here you come, dear little kid. I knew you were going to come sooner or later. And sits right next to you. And it's in your ear because your defenses are down. So you don't have the strength to say, hmm, I'm resisting you so I know you're going to flee. Why are you here? Do you get fed? Do you get refreshed? Do you get restored? Or do you come so that you can be changed? You do know that everybody that comes to church on Sunday isn't church hopping just to be church hopping. Some people are coming because they really need to be changed. There are people out there who come in here who don't look like us, who don't smell like us, who don't talk like us, who don't have what we have, and they're coming in here for a change. That's why they come in here. Everybody that comes in here that looks less than us, and by the way, how dare we judge? But they come in here and they may not have what we have. They're not always coming in here for a handout. Sometimes they want to leave differently. They're not coming in here to say, can I have a dollar? Can I have five dollars? I haven't eaten in three or four days. There are people that come in church, and I know it because I've heard it, and I've heard their testimonies. They haven't eaten in days, but they're not asking for anything. They just want to know, can you pray for me? Because I'm tired of living like this. So the question is, why are you here with your same self? Are you going to help facilitate that change? We always say we want to live out of the box and we want to do ministry that is out of the box and we want to reach those that are unchurched and unsaved. But why, if you're not coming in here to learn how to do those things, then why are you here? Because quiet as it's kept, we have you. You join church. You come to service. You do your duties. But when you go out there, do you put what you learn in here to good use? So if you are not putting it to good use, then why are you coming? This is not a harsh message. This is a question. Because the body of Christ as a whole, the big C, is failing in their evangelistic duties. We are losing young people by the second to everything but Christ. We are losing older people by the second to everything. It's not just, oh, he got hooked on drugs, or oh, she's not a prostitute, or oh, he lose, or oh, he's a drunk. It's no, they hurt me while I was in there, so I'm not going back. How can you tell me about God, but yet you treat me worse than the enemy treated me? Anytime a person can come in church and say, well, I had more fun when I was in sin. And I lived better when I was in sin. And we don't do anything to change their mind, but you have the knowledge within you. Why are you here? The message today is to encourage you to seek the answer to the question for yourself. Why are we coming here every Sunday? Is my life changing for the better since I've been coming? Mom, I said to myself that I was going to do, since you gave out the preaching rotation, that this is going to be a series. Remember when you were in school and you learned who, what, why, where, and when? So we covered why today. The next message, who do you come for? The next message, what do you do when you get here? These are questions we have to ask ourselves so that we can move as the body of Christ. Because there is no reason that we come in here on Sunday and we do what we do and we cry and we holler and we scream and we fall out and we say we are filled and we are blessed in the Lord. And then Sunday evening about 6 o'clock, the devil had raised so much hell in your life you forgot you went to church. Why are you really here?
things that just stick in your head just every time you turn around and you hear it. Well, then why, why am I here? What do I experience when I'm here? You go to, you hear some people when they come from church, you're like, well, girl, how is church today? Girl, why show this thing? Yeah, but that was the word. Well, who preached? Girl, I don't know, because you know, I fell out under the spirit, and then I went to my seat. And then uh, Prophetess Watermelon told me that I was going to get a cop within six months. But you didn't hear any of the word that would have instructed you on how you are to live so that God can bless you with the means to get the vehicle that Prophetess Watermelon talked about. We bypass so much of the good stuff in service because we're here, and then we're here, and then we're here, and then we're here. And then the word goes forth and it goes here. Are you really here for the word? Or are you here because Chris can play you into the spirit? Are you here for the word? Are you here for God? My grandma used to tell me, I want you to be in church so much that if you don't go on Sundays, your clothes will get up and go without you. And that's how I was raised. But it didn't happen to me until I was about 30, 32, that I really started figuring out why I was going to church. Because I was so beat down out there that I needed to get in here to get what I needed so that I could go back out there and fight another day. If you don't have what you need so that you can fight another day, figure out why you really came here. because I was single and I was in hopes of catching a husband. But that's not the case because we all family in here. Our quick can't marry Chris because that's my brother. So we're not coming in here to get chosen. But I would like for you to make a choice while you're in here. Choose God. Choose a Christ life. Stop leaving here the same way you came. And then wonder why your life isn't getting any better. So then you get angry at God. It's not his fault. He's been here all the time. Where you been? Come get fed. Come get refreshed. And if you need it, come for change. I hope, I pray, that's why you're here. Amen? Amen. Amen.